Hi everyone, welcome. I'm down here in my wormery preparing to check in on a bin of red wiggler worms. They live right here in this tub and they're due for a feeding. So I've got a nice assortment of different stuff in here. I see lettuce, I see cherries removed of their pits, um, the core of a pepper, another core of a pepper, and possibly other things. This to me looks like zucchini. So we'll see what kind of other things are in this assortment of delicious foods for the wormies. It's been 12 days since the last check-in. At that last check-in 12 days ago though, we had gone 21 days, three whole weeks without feeding. And from what I remember, we didn't encounter a whole lot of food. We, um, we fed right over here. I could see a hint of our feeding zone indicator marking the corner of the bin that we fed last time. Since this is the system where we've been doing these so-called pocket feedings, we just uh, alternate. We go from corner to corner to corner, going around the bin over and over again. That was the 13th pocket feeding. And the 14th pocket feeding is going to go in right over here. So let's uh, let's just briefly move aside our feeding zone indicator. It's in good enough shape to get reused here, from what I can tell. And since that's the feeding zone for today, where we're going to attempt to fit all this food, it does seem like quite a bit. I mean, I've got my prepared bedding on standby, and I've also got a couple napkins I'd like to use up as some supplementary bedding too but uh i guess before we get to feeding let's just see how they did with that last meal i think the last thing they were fed were stuff like cantaloupe rinds and watermelon rinds so if we were to find minimal leftovers here i'd be um i guess i'd be ex that's kind of what i'd be expecting to see i mean geez look at all these worms if you want to pick them all up you do need both hands it seems Look at all these little guys. All right, I was attempting to allow this bundle of material to gradually sort of crack open, never really allowing the worms to get totally out of view, but it's, uh, it's tricky, you know, the whole pile is just moving. <laughs> <laughs> with the worms in it. All the worms attempting to just get out of the bright lights and flee from the the glare. So, watermelon isn't going to leave too much leftovers. Perhaps a little tiny bit of the rind. But as far as cantaloupe, cantaloupe is almost always going to leave behind these chunks of the cantaloupe rind. And those will take a little bit longer. What here I see this shinier, glossier material. That might actually be the skin of the watermelon. But uh, I think if it wasn't for the worm party, we probably wouldn't have. We probably already moved on by now to the, see the next corner. But since it was such a such an active feeding frenzy going on, I just couldn't really resist checking it out. But I think we can proceed now to checking out the other corners. So I mean, like I said, 12 days to go back here, but then add another 21 days. So I mean. 33 days, over a month since that corner right there was last fed. So I doubt we'll see much, if any, leftovers. I can't recall from the last check-in either whether we encountered many leftovers there or not, or what the story was there. But, you know, I mean, even this corner that was last fed, as far as leftovers go, once those cantaloupe rinds are consumed, there will be no sign of that feeding at all. So here... I guess what, what we're going to probably end up bumping into are certain very old, slow composting objects. Like this right here is a little bit of the husk of a mango seed, which just by its presence suggests there's probably another piece of it, perhaps like the other half of it that's missing. Yeah, right there. Seem like part of the overlap is still here too, but then like this, I can imagine being the part that completes this sort of half of a mango seed. The whole mango seed would have been this big, so I cut it open to give them access to the seed inside, and then this is really just that tough shell that takes much, much longer to break down. So, uh, all right, so I'm not sure why, but I'm just finding myself a little bit more curious than usual to see how these corners are coming along. In past check-ins, we've just sort of breezed right through them just to be over and done with it, it seems. But, um... 
I, I was just kind of curious in terms of what to expect, especially since the, you know, number one, the very long pause between feedings two check-ins ago with the 21 days, the three day, uh, the three weeks in there. Um, plus the more recent feeding, the last feeding they got of very fast composting foods, which would leave minimal leftovers. It almost makes me feel like I'm checking in on, on a system that has virtually no leftovers floating around in it. So we've managed to disrupt a good bit of this leafy matter that I was um, encountering out on the top surface. The only place we didn't see it was in the actual feeding zone. Everywhere else there was a good bit of it remaining. And um, I think it's because we possibly didn't even apply any over there. So this will become the feeding zone indicator once we fed. Let's get it out of the way just so we can excavate the corner where we're going to be feeding. And as you saw, that large quantity of food that they're going to be receiving all needs to fit into this feeding zone. So I've got a feeling we're going to be creating a somewhat larger feeding zone than we normally do. So we won't need all this stuff that I've excavated to cover up with because it's going to be a, a hole packed with bedding and food items and a good bit of it. So we've created a, a hole which I assume at this point should be large enough to house this entire feeding. Perhaps I'm just exaggerating its size in my mind because maybe it's not so so much. but. Let's get the feeding zone indicator set aside briefly so we've got access to the foods that we're going to be giving them. So I was just curious to see what other sort of things there were in here. It just seems like more of the same in terms of the lettuce and the cherries. And not a whole lot of anything else. So it does seem like quite a nice meal for them. So let's start into trying to get rid of some of these objects. I've got my prepared bedding too, but I figured maybe we would start with some of this on the very bottom. Sort of like a place setting. <laughs> and then I'll have a whole other one of these that I'm going to want to do away with. So it seemed to me like if the bedding that I want to see worked on is sort of intermittently added with the foods, it seems pretty likely that the worms will get to the bedding type materials um, as if it were just you know more of the food that's there surrounding it and there's a good bit of it here all these cherries were uh, becoming pretty nasty but I went through all of them individually and hacked out the seed so they're all seedless frozen cherries <laughs> but uh, let's see we're making good progress you're almost fun, done as a matter of fact so all, we, all I've got to do is um, grab a little bit of my prepared bedding even though I'm running a little bit low oops what do we got going on here got a little guy I was trying to climb out and another one over there so I should be really careful make sure we don't end up with wormies missing from the group perhaps I'm just being a little bit overly intrusive on my visit here but I don't know. I sort of imagined us using even more bedding than this, but we don't really need to. As much as the worms probably enjoy giving them a huge amount of bedding. Um, as you can see, my supply of the prepared bedding is running a little bit low, and I only grabbed those couple of napkins. So why don't we leave it at that? It is a pretty substantial feeding with a pretty substantial quantity of bedding included. So hopefully they appreciate that. Man, look at all those really nice castings. For a number of check-ins now, the system's been, you know, covered with that top coating of leafy matter. But with all the stuff we excavated to make that nice big hole, it does almost seem like we could spread this stuff out and give the entire system this really nice appearance of castings piling up. <laughs> and on goes our feeding zone indicator. So that's it for our check-in with the now 191-day-old Red Wiggler system with pocket feeding number 13. Well, the so far was 13, so this is actually pocket feeding number 14, and overall feeding number 16 that the system is receiving today. So that's it for the check-in, everyone. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. That's always really appreciated. 
And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. That's very much appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye now.